All right, everyone, welcome to podcast number three. This week, I have for you a special guest, S4. Uh, S4 is currently a member of Team OG, who have won both of Valve's majors this year, and he is weeks away from competing in his fourth international. Incredibly well-respected for his character as both a teammate and a player, I bring you Gustav. Gustav, how you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah? Uh, you guys are out in Toronto, I believe, yeah. for your... TI boot camp? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you guys staying out there? What are you guys doing? Um, I mean, we're, we're just practicing Dota for the, most of, for the most of it. But we've been doing some stuff just when we came here. We did some paintball and some exercise and stuff before we actually. Yeah. It didn't go so well. Yeah, it was first time for me. Uh, didn't me go so it. well for me, but I think, yes, it was one of the better ones at it. Yeah. yeah, I used to I used to ref paintball actually. Oh yeah, back in the day. So is that hard? Or no, it was like shots? it was well, yeah. Occasionally, like the players would just shoot the ref because they thought they were funny. Yeah, um, I actually got shot by Yasser, and he was my teammate. You know, <laughs> in the back, yeah. he was yeah. going crazy. Yeah, was that an accident? Yeah, that's it was. A, accident. Is that team bonding? Is that productive for team bonding or counterproductive? No. That's counterproductive. Counterproductive. Yeah. Uh, so are you, who are you guys, um, where are you staying like at in Toronto? Are you guys just at some random land cafe or some Red oh, Bull facility or? Some Red Bull facility, just just a house here we're staying nice. at. Is it nice? Yeah, it's very nice. We have like our own room, kind of, where some of us are sharing, but. How long have you guys been out there? How long? One week now. One week. And you guys are yeah. staying there all the way to, you're not going to DreamHack. Right. No, we're just gonna watch and then um, scream for the most part. Who from who from TI is actually playing at DreamHack? Is it just Liquid? S Secret Liquid. Uh, who else? I don't know. I I don't know. Actually, there was only four teams, right? I think yeah, so. hold on, I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, it's only four teams. Planet Odd and then Vega are joining them. Oh, is yeah. that uh? <laughs> is this going to be a sleeper tournament? Is Vega, yeah, Vega kinda. not going to win? Mm. No. Like Liquid or Secrets, yeah. Yeah, even with yeah. them kind of sandbagging a little bit? Yeah, I think so. I they want to have like a, they want to feel good going into TA. What was the what was the last tournament you guys played in? Our last tournament, that was MDL in China. Uh, we knocked out EG, but then after that we got knocked out yeah, uh, by a newbie, right? Yeah, how was how was that tournament for you guys? Well, when we played EG, we we noticed they were kind of trying stuff like holding back, and I mean we we're just trying to learn as much as possible in this patch, uh, yeah. so we took it seriously. How are you guys doing on the patch? It seems like I was I actually caught that series. Um, it seems like you guys have kind of adjusted <clears throat> decently well. I saw No Tail No Tail learned a new hero. He's now playing Visage. There seems to be like a popular hero in the meta. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. We, don't, we don't have to talk about the meta. I know you were a little sensitive about it. You don't want to. You don't want to. Uh, uh, so much. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. No, but I think that, that hero is a really good fit for him. I think it fits his play style really well. And mm -hmm. uh, if that's going to be a popular hero at TI, then you guys will probably be in a pretty good spot because yeah. uh, you guys kind of got hit by like that illusion, like radiance nerf, right? Oh yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah, that was quite a quite a nerf, but uh, yeah. Well, that's like that was right time. after Kiev, right? The patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we also didn't play that much after Kiev, so it was sure kind of yeah. like double, you know. So you would attribute that more to your like lack of preparation than yeah, like just we didn't play as good as we did at oh, Kiev. Yeah. Good. I would so say. you guys are you guys are feeling a lot more comfortable now that you have more yeah. time. Yeah. Nice. That was uh, it sucks. Like, is that is that frustrating for you to like see a patch like that? Like, you you're so dominant on a patch, and then they come in and just kind of change the whole game. Like, what what kind of effect does that have on you guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, it can be frustrating, but uh, we've been playing Dota for so long, so it's kind of expected at this point that yeah. things will be nerfed, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. Uh. Yeah, I mean, after TF3, there was a lot of nerfs, and 
I mean, back then it was hard because it was like the first time for me, you know, mm -hmm. things are getting nerfed and you kind of put the blame on the nerfs instead of yourselves, but it's sure. good to get a perspective on yourself. Don't you, do you think it's all about kind of adapting and there's really no blame for the patch? Because I, I mm -hmm. feel like there's a lot of timing involved. Well, some people, uh, some people overthink nerfs. They, they're like, oh, if something's nerfed, it's not good anymore, but it's actually still good, you know? Yeah. I yeah. got to cast and watch VP at the summit, and they busted out, like, all of those old strategies. Yeah, exactly. That was kind of cool to see. It was like, oh, like, this is, like, two patches ago, but it's working mm -hmm. really well right now. Yeah. So it's all about it's all about the heroes and what you use them for, what kind of tools and slots they fill and at the end of the day it's just about winning right yeah nice so uh you're in the ti winners club along with myself <laughs> um do you ever notice that like when you when you're at like a dota event or something and you see somebody else and you're just like that i feel like there's almost like this unspoken bond where you're just like yeah that guy won ti is that yeah uh, i mean there's been like so many people have been talking up like this ti winners and then at some point you you see it these guys, they're like, wow, they have some aura around them, you know? Yeah, they have you like feel a lot it, right? Of, they have like, yeah. But uh, I, I don't, I try not to look into it too much. But it's, yeah, there's something. I, uh, I think it's really interesting. Because like when I see you, there's like, oh, that's S4. But then there's like this, like you said, like it's a great word, aura. Like it exudes from you that you're yeah. a TI winner, or at least how I think about you. Mm -hmm. You know, I use, I put like you winning TI is such like a major accolade in your life yeah. that it, kind of speaks for you without saying anything yeah sometimes i like to sometimes i like to bring it up when i'm around people and like maybe i'll like i'll be walking around with somebody that i'm trying to impress and i'll see s4 and i'll be like that guy won ti <laughs> i think it's like the ultimate subtle brag because then they're like they remember that i also won ti ah uh, so it's a bit of self-bragging it's uh, well, i'm boosting <laughs> this both up it's a win-win yeah. you know what i mean uh, yeah. yeah um but it, for me um it was a long time ago. I won TI, so it's sure. kind of uh, it's kind of like forgotten in my mind. I'm uh, yeah. I don't think so, man. I think a uh, lot of people. I think a lot of people still remember that million dollar dream coil. Uh, of course. The meme. <laughs> Sorry, you, you know you set me up too well. I, I was I was actually not gonna say the meme, but that was. You I got me. you. I got you. Push me, man. You, know, you got the viewers, man. They they love you, man. People people love you for sure. Um, and hates. Really, you have some haters. Ah. Not that many, actually, compared yeah. to some other no, players. I I've, I've got way more haters than you, right? Yeah, and our coach, Sebastian. Oh, is he among the haters, or does he have haters? He has a lot of haters, I, I think. think. I think Sebastian and I, you know, we've had our differences in the past, but it's all... It's yeah, all I know. Past, I you know? actually thought about mentioning it, but for, for fun. I, I like to think, you know, my Twitter beef is more for entertainment purposes than actual beef. But mm -hmm. um, I kind of had, I've always had some small issues with players losing and then becoming coaches and then kind of their teams have success and then they feel like they're a part of the team. I think that's probably just my ego getting in my mm -hmm. way. But it sounds like Sebastian's been like a real genuine uh, help to you guys. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, glad I'm, uh, I'm not exaggerating. He's been very helpful. Like, yeah, he's really as smart. a sixth player. Yeah. Even more so. This uh, guy. <laughs> if what if one player got sick and Sebastian had to sub in, who would who would who would be best for you guys? Who would you have the best chance to win with? I mean, it would probably be like offlane or carry. I'd say. Really? Yeah. The, Mid the is kind of hard to just jump in into, and then like you have to outskill this other high high yeah. MMR guy. You know, that, that yeah. are really good. That's like my. That's my biggest complaint in matchmaking is I'll have like the highest MMR and people expect me to play like carrier mid when I'm just trying to practice support. Yeah. And I end up like going mid against Sumail or somebody and I just get so exposed as like yeah, just a totally inferior player, right? Like in the mid lane, like I don't even have a yeah. chance. It's like somebody gank my lane. Maybe I have a chance. I yeah. kill him like twice. Um, so you have this reputation of being this like incredibly nice guy. Is that... Is that true? Are you the nicest person in Dota? No, I don't think so. Who's nicer than you? Uh, Tao. Fly. Really? Yeah. I could believe that. 
He seems like a really nice guy. Yeah. Who's the meanest it's... guy on your team? That's uh, our coach. Yeah. Have you seen his tweets? <laughs> he's so mean, man. I think he's you see how salty. angry he is? Yeah. He's salty. Yeah. He's super salty. All right, that makes sense. So he cracks the whip from time to time, gets you guys back in shape, not practicing hard enough. Yeah. Uh, Zai actually said in one of like the Steel Series interview videos they posted, he said the actual truth about S4 is that I quote: "Truth is, he's an asshole. People are afraid to say anything bad against him." Do you have any response to an accusation like that? I think he's he's being a bit sarcastic, like Zai usually is. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like it was a pretty serious interview, man. He's really mm -hmm. firing some shots. Yeah. Nah, you used to play with Zai. You guys, you guys are buddies, so I'm sure it was all, yeah. I'm sure it was I'm all just good, fun. Yeah, I'm good friends with all of them in EG. Yeah, seems like you're pretty good friends with a lot of people. Um, I almost think of you as like somebody, you know, I never, I never got to play with you myself. Although, like, I'm sure, I, I mean, I would have loved to play with you. Um, I think we offered. When did we ask you to play for our team? Was that? Did after, it? I did we? I thought after uh, TI4 we approached the subject or something. Ah, uh, yeah, you might have actually, yeah. And you were like, uh, no, no, oh no, no, it was after TI four, I think. Because after, after that, after, that was maybe, maybe it was after TI five. And because oh, I, I think it was after TI five because we were getting rid of Aoi. They wanted to bring somebody new in, mm. and I don't think we were totally sold on our tour. But you were pretty set on going back to Alliance. Yeah, it or, just kind of happened. Uh, yeah. Can you uh, can you tell me what was going on in your head in that moment? Why you turned me down? Why uh, you went with Alliance instead? I mean, it just kind of happened. Like uh, I also missed some of the guys in the team, like because sure. I, I spent some time with them at the event. You know, are you there still? Hello. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. So like I missed some of the guys in Alliance and. Uh, I just felt it felt good to go back. I didn't. I didn't. It was kind of in the moment thing. Like I didn't think it through fully. Exactly. What did you? Uh, what did you learn from the experience? Going uh, back and playing with them. Uh, what I learned is. Uh, what did I learn? <laughs> uh, Surely you learned something. Yeah, I mean, I, I learned some new stuff about myself mostly like uh how i like so i was captain in secret at tf5 and i kept uh, i kept that role going into alliance and uh i tried to bring in some of the stuff i learned in secret into alliance again and to see if it you know works yeah so yeah and did it or you just felt like they were just two different I mean, teams to be honest, there was a lot of hard work in the beginning, like because uh, some of the stuff I wanted to do in the games, uh, people didn't know how to like implement it, like and stuff. Yeah, they didn't but, understand it, right? Yeah, they didn't understand it, so it took some time. But for me, it was just uh, you know back into playing with my friends, like being comfortable in yeah. a team. Yeah. It's interesting how Dota teams are all like incredibly good in their own ways and they learn about the game in a similar yet different way. And when you go from one team to another team, the way they think about the game might be totally different than the way your previous team thought about the game. But there's still kind of that familiar Dota knowledge where you can try to explain it and they can like kind of understand, but they almost have to like rework their brain to get yeah. on the same page as you. Yeah. And that can be really tough. That's why I think people or I think people underestimate why it's important for Dota teams to stick together or at least like kind of have like a core of guys who really direct like the thought process and the strategy mm -hmm. of the team. And yeah, because in games, it's like a matter of seconds. You have to make decisions. And if you start thinking about one thing too much, you're going to forget about basic stuff like look at yeah. the map. So you, you need to have it practice going into games and stuff. The more stuff you have practiced, the more stuff you have memorized, you know, you can yeah. just do it instantly like, without even communicating about it yeah for example if you play a new hero or you're doing a new item build on a hero and you have this new hotkey you need to click 
uh, you haven't practiced it before, then you're gonna have to keep thinking about this hotkey when you play instead of like looking at actual heroes in the team fight, you know, yeah. stuff like that. You need at least like five games to practice this new hotkey. So. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really interesting. There's a uh... There's been a couple teams that have stuck together, but we've had a, a decent amount of roster changes, but way less this year than other years, I would say. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys have been together all year. Obviously, you guys have a ton of success. EG's been around all year. Virtus Pro has been around all year. A couple of Chinese teams have stuck together. I think Newbie yeah. hasn't really changed roster at all. It's uh, I think it's an effect of, you know, this superstar teams, you know, like Team Secret and stuff that has been going like... And then it didn't go so well, you know, and people yeah. kind of looked at it and like, maybe you just need synergy and stuff, you know, not just, you know, superstars, five good players. Um, I mean, I don't really agree with that, but because uh, I think you can have both. I think you can have both too. It's just yeah. got to be done in a really good way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be careful. Um, yeah, so I was, I was kind of getting to the point where I was saying like, you are, you're almost like this, this this Dota player where I think like almost any team, like provided you guys spoke the same language, like I feel like you could almost choose any team you wanted to go to and people would take you. Mm. Do you do you not do you feel that way? I feel like you probably have a lot of offers or you would have a lot of offers if you decided you were a free agent. I, I don't know actually because I didn't really when I left teams I didn't really like announce it. So I didn't get any offers, you know. But yeah. I think now when I play offline it might be more attractive to other teams because there are there are so many mid players like good mid players right now definitely and it's it cool. would be hard to get into a mid position right now yeah all of like the rising young talent they grow up mm -hmm. wanting to be you know the next greatest mid player the next greatest yeah. carry no one not not a lot of people really aspire to be the off laner or the support yeah. you know they want to just like uh, trying to be universe you know <laughs> yeah exactly no we all we all aspire to be universe one day we just you know it's just not realistic um, I guess that kind of, we're talking about like teams sticking together and you know, obviously you guys have a great thing going over at OG. What do you, what do you look for in teammates? Like, what do you think is really important? You know, you've had experience on teams that have done really well and stuck together like this year. And then you've had experience on teams, you know, with a lot of friends like Alliance and then Team Secret where it's, you know, friends, but like things didn't really work out. Um, is there any like key aspects you think are really important? Uh... Yeah, it's just like people, I want to play with people who can learn from their mistakes and like actually don't be so negative in the games. Like if something bad happens, just like, you know, get over it and yeah, look for the next things and stuff. You don't want these players who get frustrated and make bad comments, you know, that's stuff you have to learn to remove from yourself. Yeah, I've had a decent it, amount of experience kind of with other games now that I've, you know, moved on to like a more general role at EG. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the other games just aren't, they don't have like that mature mentality that you just spoke about. You're really mm -hmm. being forward thinking and positive and, you know, oh, this really awful thing happened. Let's forget about it. Maybe talk about it after yeah. the game. But for now, let's try and win this game. Yeah, That's it's not. It, there's way too much focus on one guy being negative. So all the focus is going to be on him for like 10 seconds and then you're going to miss something in the game. Yeah. 10 seconds can mean one guy di dead on the map, you know? Yeah. It's, and that's not good for the game. It's super helpful. It's, you know, you would almost like not even want the star player if he wasn't able to think that way. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, especially in Dota, man, it's, it's about, you know, being a team and working together and really figuring it out. Um, sure, there's a couple stars here and there, but, you know, it's teams winning tournaments, not players, yeah. especially even more so nowadays. Yeah. Um, what do you think is something that, like, you bring to the table as, like, a teammate? Um, you know, we kind of talked about how, like, everybody really likes you, and you, you talk about the idea of being forward-thinking and positive and optimistic. Is that is that something that you think you brought to the team and people followed up or, um, you know, yeah. how, do you, how do you define yourself as a teammate? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I, for the most part, I'm positive in the games. I 
wouldn't go and you know start whining about something. Uh, I would always try to look forward in the games and plan the next step. And I think that's one of the one of my strengths is just looking how how to, you know to team fight or to plan the team fight and stuff before it happens. I'd say that mostly and yeah. initiation and stuff. Yeah. That's initiating. That's like that's kind of your your like Dota specialty, right? Like mm -hmm. Being an initiator. Yeah, um, I am more comfortable playing that. Yeah. So. And it makes total sense for you now to be playing in the three position in the off lane, as mm -hmm. like the three and four are almost always like the main initiators. There's a couple of exceptions, like if you're playing Darkseer or something, mm -hmm. like you're maybe not always initiating or Enigma, for example. Um, yeah. What was it like to kind of accept? the idea that maybe you weren't set to be a mid, mid player anymore. You know, you have like Sumail, Miracle, Anna, who come up and they're incredibly polarizing and they almost force um, a veteran like yourself to play out of your element to mm. adapt to them. Uh, well, uh, to be honest, I um, wanted to, you know, find some big motivation in Dota again. And I've been playing for quite a while now. Like since TI2, I've been playing Dota and I've always been playing mid pretty much. And I want something new, you know. And mid lane just went away from this, you know, initiate heroes. So, I mean, off lane is just the way to go for me. Yeah. So you talked about being demotivated. Was that like, that was after your second trip with Alliance? Did you ever think about not playing or is that just kind of. Not really a thing for you. I just I thought about like not quitting, but uh, you know maybe play like try CS:GO like competitive and stuff. But really? it never I never like seriously considered it. But it's just like a fun. I always wanted to play Dota. Well, I'm sure you're glad you came back. You guys had a outstanding year. Yeah. Yeah. Are you uh, are you expecting good things at TI as well? Mm, yes. I mean, I'm not expecting anything, to be honest. I'll Let's, just go with it. Sure. Um, a curiosity question, and you don't have to answer it, but what would be a disappointing result for you guys, like realistically? Like a second place, just unacceptable, or? Well, no, to be honest, no. I think second place is fine, but I would still not be satisfied. Uh, yeah, I think disappointing results would be you're top six, disappointed when you're top six, oh. and above. That would be very disappointing for me. Yeah, so yeah. maybe fourth, fourth is where you could sleep at night. Yeah, coming home, kinda, coming home with but coming home with a couple not, hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, but it's not really. Like maybe after. A while I would accept it, but not after you go out like that. No. Yeah. What have you done? Uh, what have you done with all your major money? You guys won two, three million dollar tournaments this year. Uh, nothing. Just saving it for now. Just chilling. Maybe spend on some apartment or something. Yeah. In the future. Yeah. You haven't bought yourself anything. Anything. I have an apartment, uh, but I'm looking for new stuff. Are you in Stockholm? Yeah. Nice. I li I like it there. It's it's a cool place. Yeah. But I heard real estate is tough, so it if is. You, if, you're, if you own an apartment, it sounds like you're doing okay. Um. I was gonna ask another question about the like switch from mid to off lane. When mm -hmm. did you when did you like really realize that like it was the right move for you? Was it just because you joined OG and they already had a mid player or um, no, I think when I joined Doji, they didn't have a mid player, so it was just like I kind of wanted to play offline already there. And uh, I mean, I didn't realize it's what I wanted to do until I've been playing for them for quite a while, you know. Yeah, uh, the first games, you're not, you're not really sure, you know, you're playing this offline, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's new, and you're not. It's like, is this I for remember me? when you I remember it? when you first started playing offlane and it was yeah. kind of cool to watch you play because you were like really testing your limits all the time because you're trying yeah. to learn really what you could and could not do. 
which yeah. led to some unfortunate deaths but yeah i feel like that's a good way of learning though like absolutely at least if you're playing pubs just go all out you know yeah in a teammates, smart way oh yeah pubs my teammates used to uh test their limits in scrim <laughs> which was yeah. uh frustrating to say the least yeah you can't have proper strategies or know if they're good or not if that yeah. happens exactly you, you play a full game and you then you say hey maybe if we wouldn't have had a couple deaths in laning phase this would have worked <laughs> mm -hmm. but um yeah, what can you do? You play a lot of pubs still? I know. Yeah, I play quite a bit. I'm 9k right now. I got it back. I lost it, but now I got it back. 9k? Are you going for the 10k? Yes, I'm going to be honest. It's really hard to win pubs in the offlane role. I don't know. Universe, uh, I, don't, I think he I thinks think the same. Can. Yeah, he does think it, the same. It's like you play this hero that get trialing in the beginning, so you're three levels behind their carry, and then you're going to have to win against their high MMR mid, who's crushing your other mid. Yep. And those games are insanely hard. Those games are hard indeed. Um, I was listening to a couple of your like interviews and stuff, really trying to digest as much S4 as I could before we hopped on this podcast. Um, I was listening to your TI5 player profile, and you talked about how, or I think maybe you said... Your dad asked you, how are you going to get better at this game or how are you going to be better than everyone else? And you said, I'm going to play. Oh, my brother did. Yeah. yeah, your brother did. And you said you're going to play more than anybody. Yeah. Um, do you still think you play more than anybody? Mm, no, I wouldn't say so. But Most people? I, I would I would say I spend a lot of time thinking about, about Dota, maybe more than some other people. Um, thinking, thinking about it in what way? Just fair crafting. And like actually... I think pubs I don't play as much as I did before, but definitely just thinking about the game and trying to like think of new ways that can make a hero work or whatever. And then you talk to your teammates about those theory crafted ideas? Only if I think they're good. I won't say everything. Yeah. I won't tell them everything that's on my mind. That would be too much. Like especially like on the offline there's there's so many item builds you can go in the start of the game so you really have to think for like it's the most versatile role in starting items for sure for sure yeah do you miss the um iron talent jungle days of the offlane sometimes when you <laughs> die three times on the lane but no i i don't i, I don't think it's as fun yeah so you, uh, you theory craft about dota all the time you practice dota all the time is there anything you guys said you went paintballing and you went and did something else. What what else are what else are you doing outside of Dota these days? Uh, not much to be honest. It's just exercise if I have time. Uh, I don't do that. I don't do it that much right now, but I used to. And uh, I don't know, watch movies or stuff. That was a great answer. Thank you yeah. for thank just... you for that. <laughs> Uh, have you played any? Have you played any player battlegrounds? That's kind of like the craze right now. I know you were kind of into H1, right? Yeah, I was. I was actually playing a lot of H1 when, yeah, when it was big. Uh, but now when PUBG released, I had no time of playing it. Like I've been on Dota, yeah, for so much now. So I, I was. I haven't really installed it yet. Yeah, I was playing yesterday, and QO of all people messaged me and was like, "Got room for one more?" So I played oh, a yeah. game with QO, and guess. He wanted to drop into the most contested area instantly. Now, <laughs> Kyo is a crazy guy. Yeah, is uh, it made it made perfect sense. But I, I I I'm just like weak to these games because if I get started with it, I'm yeah. it's gonna be hard to get me away from it. So I, I don't really want to touch it. I know you're not touching CS:GO either. No, Only maybe a few games. <laughs> oh. oh. Are, does but your team have any have any strict policies during um during your boot camps and stuff? Uh, not really, but it's like it's a thing that's I don't think it's that very acceptable to just go and play other games when you're in a boot camp. Not at all. Oh, maybe sometimes, but you know, playing it for a few hours, you know, it's like to be honest, it yeah, it's not helpful. Do you guys have any any rules? Or any kind of like team policies at all, like about 
like the like going to tournaments or you know for your boot camps or when you're back at home any kind of mm. guidelines that you follow you know i know a lot of teams are like no girls at LAN, like no girlfriends or i know we on dota were like no no other games at all until like after ti that sort of thing do you have any uh any hard probably, policies uh we probably do have some but i can't think of it right now uh Oh, I don't know, actually. No problem. But yeah, I mean, the girls and stuff, I think it's fine, but it should never take away time from practice. I guess that. Just be on time for everything. Yeah? Yeah. Do you guys set, like, certain times um, at lands or boot camps to, like, go over strategy and practice yeah. your heroes and stuff? Sure, like... Uh, there's the scrim times and then there's the times where we discuss as a team outside the monitors and yeah how much time do you guys think you guys <coughs> do like before like just say let's just say you're at ti and you guys have a match best of three the next day how much how much time are you guys putting into preparing for that match mm, as a team maybe 30 minutes or an hour but uh, our coach would spend way more time than that preparing the yeah. stuff he shows us. Yeah. What I, I you don't have to tell me if it's like too much information, but like what kind of inf what kind of stuff do you guys go over? Um, in that like thirty minute time as a team. It's just in general, like what we're planning to do. I mean, I, I can't can't really mention anything. That's fine. I'm just I'm curious if Detail. you guys are watching the other team's replays or analyzing their drafts, maybe doing some mock drafts. Uh, a little bit of all of that. Yeah. Gotcha. And you guys all, you guys are all active participants in that, or is there any, like, I know, like, we had a couple thinkers and a couple players, so we'd have some people who would be present but really wouldn't have a huge opinion unless they were around their role. I think everyone should have their eyes on, on the opponent and actually get their minds into the game are already there in the prep and uh so i think it's good that everyone is in there yeah uh, so you're not surprised in game like the way they're playing i think so too um yeah. is that something that's new for you this year with like this team or has that always been the case for teams that you've been on oh uh, it is actually new for me i didn't really do it much i only did like uh mock dress and stuff and just preparing myself like and then the four other players they would just play pubs and stuff and i would just think in my head like how am i gonna draft you know oh really yeah you're that much of like an individual leader i guess i i was actually that was actually one of my weaknesses as a captain i i could never like express what i was thinking to my teammates oh, uh, i mean i could at some to some extent but I, I I'm not good at you know giving the idea of what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I'm so focused on something. You've got the you've got the Dota genius. You just don't know how to articulate it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. So it's very good for your teammates to know what's up. You know. It's good for you to be self-aware about it. Yeah. Fly Fly kind of fills that void, or. Yeah, I think he does it way better than me. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's always interesting to hear how other team dynamics are for me, just because mm -hmm. I was so wrapped up and absorbed in all things EG for three years. Yeah. Was it like that for you? Were you the lonely guy? Um, Prepping. I always had my own opinion. And when I was captain, I was very into thinking about Dota, like just all the time, right? Just endlessly, like whether I was on a mm -hmm. plane or you know, getting ready to go to sleep, I was just always thinking about this cool new draft, and more so in like the beginning of my career, when I think like TI4, TI, like TI5 stuff, I think there was a lot more room for creativity in Dota, yeah. um, and maybe a little less now because it's been so refined and kind of like, eh, there, there's probably still some room for creativity, but yeah. I had kind of lost, I, I had been too, I, I had developed too many systems to kind of still be creative and come up with mm -hmm. super you unique can, ideas. Sometimes you limit yourself. And Definitely. It's hard to break those boundaries, you know. Yeah, I started to think like, oh, this is what I need in this game, and this is how I can win this game. And 
you've got to do this and this at the beginning yeah. in order to set up for this at the end and yeah you yeah you know, i guess i would limited my creativity quite a bit um not that it was necessarily it's a, a bad thing, thing though yeah yeah it can be a good thing it can be a lot more consistent results and everybody can be on the same page mm -hmm. um, but occasionally you get that really cool idea you know you get that level one roshan strat that you, you never thought of or yeah. some cool idea like that you think there's any room left for cheese in dota <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a lot of room actually. Really? It's just um, like you said, it's it's not. It depends if you want to do it. Like you're gonna have to pick very weird stuff, and then maybe you're not as consistent as a team in yeah. your results. And people tend to go to the consistency, so less picks, not so much variety. That's uh, that's really neat to hear. We had a couple. Um, I asked for viewer questions. I don't know if you, you you mind answering a couple. Yeah, sure. All right. Let's see here. This one was kind of. We kind of talked about this one a little bit. Um, this one's from Frank the Tank 14. He says, mm, "Do you? I guess he's asking. Do you enjoy being like? I guess you said like you really enjoyed being like the behind the scenes guy and not like the captain shot caller." Um, and you talked about, you said that's because you have trouble articulating yourself. Um, but do you, do you still weigh in like heavily on like meta and strategy, or do you just really only kind of speak up when you feel like you have something to say? Hey, I, yeah, exactly. Like you said, I try to speak up when there's something important. If it's something less important, I might not try to say it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, that's something. Uh, it's hard to focus on your role sometimes when you play a core role, and then you have to captain, and that that is a, another reason why I stepped down as a captain. And I, I really I didn't really have another captain in my previous teams that could do it, like in Alliance, for example. No one was really there to captain. Do you think Puppy was like a good captain for you? Yeah, he was for sure. In game. So was that like one of your concerns when you went back to Alliance and you realized that you just didn't really have like that strong captain? Yeah, kind of. There was not really anyone else to like co-captain or whatever. Is that one of the? Is that maybe one of the reasons why you went with OG after this year? Because you knew they had like a strong captain and fly. Yeah, I think so. And oh, also oh. they. Yeah, they're also like uh, they're very high, highly rated as a team so it's kind of a easy choice yeah also. how important do you think it is for a team to have like a really kind of strong like vocal leader uh, i think it's everything you, you can't have five guys you know trying to decide what's the best move you need to have one guy and then every everyone sticks to that call and then base their play around it nice okay next question is actually from my younger brother, Robot Vice Dota, he asks, "What is the most emotional moment you've ever had with a fan, if you've had one?" And I guess this can be like somebody like cheering you up after a loss, or um, maybe I don't know, maybe you getting really mad at a fan, which I doubt would ever happen. Mm, emotional. Uh... You ever just had a really bad day and popped on social media, and someone said, "Hey, don't worry, buddy." You're doing great. Uh, not really. I mean, I had one moment where I got to sign some boobs from a guy. That was very guy. emotional for me. Yeah. That, what was no, that not moment? really. I, I mean, there's not really been any emotional. Yeah. What's your? Uh, I would remember it. If you don't mind me asking, like, what's your like support structure like? Are, are your parents really into your gaming and stuff? Do you talk to them a lot about? Oh yeah, stuff? yeah, they are. I, I think my mom doesn't understand that much, but my dad follows me a lot. Yeah, and my brothers all do. My dad is obsessed with my Dota career. <laughs> He's like always messaging. He used to message me all the time about strategies, and I oh, yeah. He's probably gonna listen to this too, and <laughs> he's gonna give me just shit like Peter. Stop being so stubborn. You know, yeah, my dad will be like, be on, my dad will be on Reddit, and he'll be like, Ah, Peter, people are saying <laughs> some crazy stuff about you. 
I'm like, Dad, get off of Reddit. What are you doing? I saw, I saw this Twitter comment. Uh, you should, you know, <laughs> yeah, kind of comments. Yeah, so I get a couple. I get a couple DMs from him, maybe some texts, the occasional email. But yeah. he's uh very well intentioned. So yeah. he's probably my biggest fan. It's nice to have the family back there. Yeah. Do your parents also, or do your family also live in Stockholm? Yeah, they live nearby. Nearby. Yeah. You have a car? No, I don't. It would be helpful to have one actually. I don't have a license. I have a license. I know. No. It's, I know it's tough to get a license over there in Sweden. Yeah, it is actually way harder than probably America. America's America's everything is a little bit easier here. I think just yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's cool though. Hopefully, it just takes time. I don't think it's that hard though in Sweden. It just takes a lot of time. Yeah. Maybe. Well, you know, time time is our most valuable resource as we grow older. As I'm sure, yeah. you know, we're all learning that. Um, let's see. What else? What do you? Uh, what kind of car are you gonna get when you win TI? Uh, good question. Bugatti. Bugatti. That's smart. Yeah. You should ask Gavin what he thinks. He's got great taste in cars. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. So you're excited for TI? You know, we're we're staying downtown this year. Oh, we are. The yeah. first hotel. It's gonna be downtown. I think, yeah, the okay. hotels will be downtown. Do you know which one? Mm. You don't have to say it, but... Yeah, I don't know exactly which hotel. I'm not privy to yeah. all the details, but I've heard a couple things through the through the grapevine. Yeah. But I'm excited to be there, man. It's going to be an all awesome right. year. Dota, Dota, the International, for those who you have never been there, like watching at home or listening, it's uh, it's a magical event. It's uh, It's a really good time. I've obviously very biased i've had great experiences there for the most part um but i'm sure you can agree ti3 yeah. was probably an unbelievable experience for you that's when i yeah. that's when i first started watching dota mm-hmm. um was you played han, right yeah i played han. i played against you and han yeah i know <laughs> you probably played competitive before me in han i played i remember i used to play support i played support kind of in han but then i also played kraken do you remember Kraken? Yeah, yeah. I was a Kraken specialist. Yeah. So I played like Kraken Pied or Sport. Yeah, exactly. And um, do you not remember? I played against you guys when you were playing with Team Lion, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I played against you guys at that like NA, NAA, NASL like, pre-recorded game. And mm-hmm. I, went, I went, what's the 15 and 0 thing called in Han? Like, <laughs> it was a thing called... Immortal? Oh immortal. right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was Go like the there was the Beyond Godlike, like in Dota, but then there's the 15 kill one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I went Immortal playing Kraken against you guys, and we still lost the game. I was so there. upset. Yeah, uh, actually, I started playing competitive uh, with that team, and I was playing against. I think the first competitive match kind of was against these guys, uh, Fly and Noto. Yeah. I mean, we lost, but that's kind of where my competitive things started they won a lot of stuff yeah very good solid. you guys ever reminisce about the han times your your han times were a little darker than others <laughs> yeah but that, that's kind of where it started and like where you realize maybe you're good at this you know you can actually play against these guys yeah are you uh how sensitive are you to the uh not showing up to the land thing Hmm. Oh, you mean Han? Yeah. No, I'm not sensitive. <laughs> so you, you, for people that don't know, there was a LAN in California, right? Yeah. For your team, and you just decided you weren't going to go? Yeah, no no passport. Was. Oh, yeah, no passport. Oh. Uh-huh. So you wanted to go, but you couldn't? Yeah, I wanted to go. That sucks. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up for me. I've been living, I've been living with that idea of you just like being... A land dodger for years. Oh yeah, you, I, I, I was gonna cool. dodge to every, but I decided to go. That was a really smart decision by you. Yeah. Yeah. You guys gonna have as dominant of a uh, TI this year? As champion. Uh, OG. Yeah. Uh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, what, what hero? What hero are you gonna play the most? My hero. Uh, it's gonna be. Puck. Puck. Million dollar dream coil. Million dollar dream coil incoming. Yeah. 
for the memes. That was nice of you. People appreciate you. You should uh, you should do more public speaking stuff, man. Everybody loves you. Sure, I'll try. Sure, I'll try. That sounds like a no. <laughs> no, maybe. Like, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you like coming on the podcast. I know, like, I feel like this isn't really exactly your favorite thing in the world to do. So I appreciate you taking the time. And I mean, sure that's yeah. When you ask me to do a podcast, I'm gonna have to say yes. Ah, uh, the unspoken, the unspoken TI Gentlemen's Club. Um, yes, but I'm I'm pretty sure everybody watching super appreciative that you were willing to come on here and talk to us for a bit, and uh, I will I will see you at TI. But I think yeah. that's anything else you want to talk about? Or you want to wrap it up? Not really. I mean, it's gonna be fun to meet you at TI. Uh, we probably won't have much time to talk because we're gonna be very focused on the tournament. But yeah, but after after you guys get eliminated, we can. You'll have all the time in the world, right? After we win, yeah, we can go after, party yeah. hard. Yeah. After you win, I'll see you at the after party, and yeah. I'll finagle you a, a free drink from the open bar. Yeah. Sounds good, man. All right. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. That's going to be the end. Everyone, make sure you say thank you to S4. Uh, if you want to listen to this full podcast, maybe you didn't catch the whole thing. It's going to be uploaded later tonight onto YouTube iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, whatever podcast program you use. Um, thank you so much, S4. And thank you ever so much, everyone, for watching. Have a, have a good night.